Welcome to this video in which we talk about time shifting and time reversal in discrete time signals. And so I've drawn here a few examples of the sorts of things we're going to do. If we have a time signal x of n and we subtract k, where k is some known value, some integer, it turns out this shifts our signal left or right depending on the sign of k. If we take x, our known signal, and we replace n with minus n, this actually reverses the time index, and in fact, um, what it does is it flips uh, the signal about the point n is equal to zero. And so if we uh, combine the two, where we have x of k minus n, where again k is some known value, what this does is it flips x and then shifts it. And so what we'll do is go through some examples that show how this works, and then um, hopefully by the time we're done you'll have a feeling for how it works and if you're presented with, with uh, situations that we haven't talked about here you'll know how to begin working with them uh, how to how to start to understand uh, what the signals uh, when they're shifted or flipped what's actually what the result is okay so suppose that we have a signal x of n which is created by taking a unit step function and adding 2 to its argument. So we have u of n plus 2. And the question you might ask is, well, what does this mean? Well, the easiest way I've found to solve these problems is to make a table that looks like this. And some of you may feel like this is uh, too basic. Uh, if you do, great, skip to the result. But for the rest of us, I found this to be very helpful. So for example, when n is 0, so I want to find x of 0, n, of n plus 2 is 2, u, the unit step function of n plus 2, is going to be u of 2, and you'll remember the unit step function is 1 when its argument is greater than or equal to 0, and it's 0 when its argument is less than 0. So u of n plus 2, when n is 0, is going to be its arguments greater than or equal to 0, so u is going to be 1. Okay, if I say n is equal to 1, then I'm finding x of 1. n plus 2 is 3. u of 3 is 1. Again, its argument here is greater than 0. Um, let's take another value. n is equal to minus 1. n plus 2 is 1. u of 1 that is u of n plus 2, u of 1 is 1. So I haven't actually found the spot where this unit step function goes from 0 to 1. Well, let's see what happens when n is equal to minus 2. n plus 2 is 0, u of 0 is 1. But I'm actually getting closer to the point where u of its argument will not be 1, but it'll be 0. So let's see if I go minus 3, n plus 2 is minus 1, u of minus 1 is 0, right? The unit step function of its argument, if that argument is negative, is 0. So if I graph what I've come up with here, for n equal to negative 3, I had a value of 0. For n equal to negative 2, I had a value of 1. n equal to negative 1, I had a value of 1, and so on. When n was 0, I had a value of 1 uh, when n was 1. I had a value of 1, and so on. So you can see that what I have here, uh, a unit step function, the thing that I started with, uh, let's see, we'll draw it in sort of a nice bubblegum pink, looked like this. And so you can see what's happened is by adding 2 to its argument, I've taken the unit step function and shifted it to, to the left. Okay, so this guy here is a shift of 2 to the left. Okay, well, let's try another example and see what happens. So let's suppose that for this example, x of n is equal to u 
of n minus 1. And let's see what happens. Again, I start making a table. I have n, n minus 1, and u of n minus 1. Okay, when n is 0, n minus 1 is minus 1. u of negative 1 is 0, because when its argument is negative, u is 0. When n is equal to 1, n minus 1 is 0. u of, its, of 0, that is when its argument is 0, is 1. When n is equal to 2, n minus 1 is 1. u of 1 is 1. And so you can see, hopefully without going through a lot more of these, when n is 0, so for n equal to 0, I had a value of 0. For n equal to 1, I had a value of 1. For n equal to 2, I had a value of 2, and so on. Okay, And again, to show you what we've actually done here, the unit step function without me playing with it or messing with it at all looks like this. Okay, so you can see that's what, that what has happened is this point where I go from 0 to 1 has shifted 1 to the right. Okay, so this uh, n minus 1 is an argument shifts 1 to the right. So hopefully um, you can uh, see the pattern here. We've done enough that this makes sense. So if I have u of n minus k, where again k is some integer, it could be positive or negative, then this will shift right if k is greater than 0. So if I have u of n minus 1, I'm shifting to the right by 1. If I have u of n minus 10 million, I would shift to the right by 10 million. This will shift left if k is less than 0. Okay. So if I have u plus 1, then I shift to the left by 1. If I have u uh, plus a million, I shift to the left by a million. Okay, so this tells us what happens when we shift right and left. Well, another thing that happens occasionally, and uh, happens more occasionally in textbooks than it seems to happen in the real world, but um, is suppose x of n is u of minus n. Okay, so I take, uh, for every value of n here, I multiply it by negative 1 and get that value of u. Well, let's see what happens when I start my table. Okay, so when n is 0, minus n is 0, and u of 0 is 1. You remember, u of 0 is, uh, or I'm sorry, u is 1 when its argument is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, when n is equal to 1, minus n is negative 1, and u of negative 1 is 0. When n is equal to negative 1, minus n is 1, and u of 1 is 1. Okay. When n is 2, minus n is negative 2, and u of negative 2 is 0. When n is negative 2, minus n is 2, and u of n is 1. So what I have here is something that looks like this. When n is 0, it's 1. When n is negative 1, it's 1. When n is negative 2, it's 1. When n is 1, it's 0. When n is 2, it's 0. So hopefully you can see the pattern. This guy goes off into infinity, being 0. This guy goes off in the opposite direction into infinity, being 1. And so if you compare this to a, a normal unit step function, we have... Um, a normal unit step function is 1 at 0, 1 at 1, 1 at 2, and 0 at negative 1, 0 at negative 2, and so on. And so what this has done is this has flipped 
about the n is equal to 0 point. Okay, so it's taken our unit step function and taken um, uh, it's taken our unit step function and taken these parts, which used to be for positive n, and flipped them around so that they're there for negative n. Okay. Well, finally, we have one last example to do, and uh, here we'll bomb this guy. And let's suppose that x of n is equal to u of 2 minus n. Okay, so again, let's set up our table n 2 minus n and u of 2 minus n. Okay, when n is equal to 0, this guy's 2, and u of 2 is 1. When this guy is 1, this guy is 1, and u of 1 is 1. When this guy is 2, this guy is 0, and u of 0 is still 1. When this guy is 3, this guy is negative 1, and u of negative 1 is now 0. When this guy is 4, um, 2 minus n is negative 2, u of negative 2 is 0. So if we draw this, what we see is that when n is equal to 0, it's 1. When n is equal to 1, it's 1. When n is equal to 2, it's 1. But when n is equal to 3, I almost, almost led myself astray there, it's 0. And when n is equal to 4, it's 0. So again, this was 0. Oh, I'm sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so my unit step function started off looking like this. And so what I've done is I flipped it about 0. So instead of having it start with ones and go ones forever this way, it starts with ones here and goes forever this way. And I've shifted it right by two. So when n is negative and I have some arbitrary shift, if this shift is positive, it shifts to the right. If this shift is negative, it shifts to the left. This is just the opposite of x of n minus one or x of n plus two, if you remember that. So this case here, where x, where I take something and I have u of some value that's not n minus n, that turns out to be very important when we're computing discrete time convolutions, which happens when we're computing the output of a linear time invariant system from its input. So that uh, wraps up time manipulations, uh, time shifts, and reversals for discrete time signals. Hopefully you found this useful.